I'm Alex Polizzi and I've worked in top hotels for almost 30 years. I mean, are you actually taking the piss? That is unforgivable. What are you doing? She's got a hell of a temper. And having put my own money on the line to launch my own hotel, I know that times couldn't be tougher. Dreaming about having a Michelin star. Oh, my God. Oh. I mean, no wonder you never make a penny. Every day, I just cry my eyes out. With hotels struggling across the country and the hospitality industry in crisis... You're really irritating me. OK. I want to do all I can to help. You've got no idea about what you're doing. But when times are tough, there is no room for shoddiness. You should be ashamed of yourself, honestly. From deluded owners... What is it with shit hotels and town art? ..to disastrous decor... Do you like that paper or...? ..hate it. ..and downright dirtiness. Oh, for God's sake. I wouldn't want to pass a UV light over that. <laughs> I actually feel sick. I'm preparing for battle. I actually just want to walk away and wash my hands. This time... This is probably one of the worst places I've ever stayed as the hotel inspector. A hotel that might be beyond my help. It's just so depressing. With an owner in the last chance saloon. I've got to turn around fairly quickly. I do. Yeah. Very, very quickly. Four checks. Thank you. Four checks on toast. That's nice. Yes. Thank you so much. Omelet. The Falcon Hotel, run by 61-year-old lifelong hotelier Colin. I do do a bit of everything here. Yes, I do do cooking sometimes. Yes, I do work at a bar. Good. Two fried eggs, ready to go and his 27-year-old daughter and former teaching assistant, Jean. That's another breakfast done. I'm just gone. The eggs are hot. You'd bone if they were cold. This father-daughter duo took on the lease of the 16th-century coaching inn in the market town of Whittlesey in Cambridgeshire 11 years ago. I would definitely describe the hotel as quirky. Equipped with eight bedrooms, snug and 45-seat dining room, the historic building is starting to show its age. Talk about creaky floors. I know. You walk along and you feel like you're drunk. <laughs> and after centuries of guests coming and going, this old bird has seen better days. You need to have a bit of a reality check on colour schemes. <laughs> because... This colour scheme's awful. <laughs> it's white. And yellow curtains. And yellowy gold curtains. I never found my snook. The ones on here were knackered. So I moved out from the snook to here. And they fitted. <laughs> <laughs> to compound the challenges of keeping the rundown building running, profits are non existent. Last year, we made just over £22,000 loss. Obviously, we can't sustain that much longer. Why are they that price? Because I booked online. Despite often selling rooms for a little over £40 per night, Colin and Jean are still struggling to pull in enough punters. My occupancy at the moment runs at 49%, and it's going down. They're not coming anymore. Without enough cash coming in, the business is on a cliff edge. Obviously, there's a lot of stake here. You know, this is my livelihood. You know, this is, this is what I do for a living. And I want to continue doing this. And if things continue the way they are, I might not be able to. Nice and easy. I put a lot of my life into this building. Um, and I'm fair to know how to keep it. But the stress of keeping the Falcon from nosediving is putting Colin and Jean under immense pressure. I 
I just think we need a lot of help and in lots of different aspects. The business is surviving on a wing and a prayer. There is only so much money in the pot. And when it runs out, there's no pot left. To avoid this year being their swan song, they've reached out to me for help. Falcon Lane. Falcon Hotel. Aha. It's a big day for us. Hopefully, she'll like what she sees. I can't say oh, that my heart is bounding for joy at the prospect of a night here. On the other hand, let's look for some positives. The windows are clean. <laughs> I'm scraping the barrel here. Let's go and have a look. From the outside, this place looks less like a bird of prey and more like a lame duck. OK, I'm already confused. There's no opening hours there. So is it a pub or is it accommodation? Overall, it doesn't give an idea of a particularly prosperous establishment. Aha. Uh -huh. You know, I actually didn't know that places like this existed any longer. I, I, I don't know what to say. Well, I, I was a child in the 1970s, but this is what I imagined it was like. Whew. What do they do in here? Is this an eating room? Is it a drinking room? I don't know. It's... It, I, uh... The downstairs areas are in a pretty tired state. So I'm really hoping the accommodation has more to offer. Hi. Oh, hi. Hi, I'm Alex. Nice to meet you. Hi. I'm Jean. Colin. Hi, Colin. All right. Yes, yeah, so how many rooms do you have? Eight bedrooms. Mixture of doubles, twins and triples. And who does what? Colin does pretty much everything. And you? I do the hotel side of things and then Colin focuses on the food. Is it possible for me to check into my room already? Yeah. And then I'll see what the accommodation's like and we'll go from there. Is that OK? OK, yeah, no problem at all. I'll take you up to your room now. Yeah, this way. Go on, follow you. Yeah. With rooms that can go for £40 per night, I'm not expecting luxury. But even budget bedrooms have to offer the basics. Here we go. Thank you, sir. So this is a obviously a family room. Yeah, family room, door bed, single, bathrooms in here. Obviously, I don't. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay, thank you. Okay, lovely. Right. See you in a See minute. You later. Thanks. Well, I feel remarkably dispirited. Um, what a miserable room. There's literally not one nice thing to rest one's eyes upon. It's quite unusually ugly. It's so depressing. I've only been here a few minutes and I'm already wondering if this place is beyond my help. My first kind of panic reaction is, you know, where should I put the sticking plaster on this one? Because... There needs more plaster than I've got. <laughs> Let's go and see some more rooms. I mean, am I in the best room? What a terrifying thought. <sighs> Do you think the whole building is going to fall down at some point? <laughs> Fresh horror is this. <laughs> God. Well, I suppose I should be grateful that I wasn't put in here. I can't quite understand. There's not a bedside table, there's not a light. There's one overhead light. It is pretty dilapidated and, you know, this carpet must be as old as I am. And I'd like to think I'm looking a bit better than the carpet. I mean, honestly, it is 
pretty soaking. I don't even know how much of this is ingrained and how much of this is just unhoovered. And without getting a lot closer to it than I want to, I'm not going to find out. I mean, I actually do think that this is probably one of the worst places I've ever stayed as the hotel inspector. God knows I'm going to sleep in that room and I'll do it through gritted teeth. But this room I would, wouldn't stay in. I just wouldn't stay in it. I am quite shocked at this place. And I think I might just take a little turn around the block to clear my head because the truth is I have no idea where to start. Without a single positive to be seen so far, I'm worried if I can actually help to turn this place around. Sorry, this is really annoying me. Brody? Yes? Have we got a spray that works, please? <laughs> Anything in the cleaning cupboard downstairs? It's really bad. The Falcon Hotel in Cambridgeshire has got me in a flap. My inspection of the rooms has left me crestfallen, so I've stepped outside to collect my thoughts. I'm scratching my head about what on earth to do. After a decade struggling to stay buoyant... Well, what's up? The shower's broken in night. Wait, what's up with it? The top. What's up with it? It needs replacing. It's OK. It looks like this business is in freefall and badly in need of my attention. Right, squaring my shoulders, lengthening my spine, ready for battle. After the experience of the rooms, I'm hoping for better from the food. How about good chips and chilli there? Served in the 45-seater restaurant and available to hotel guests and the general public alike. Right. Hi, darling. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm OK. How are you? There you go. What of this does Colin make? What does he buy in? Um, so we tend to make the lemon and herb chicken and rye. The gammon, that's obviously bought from the butchers. OK, um, okay my darling. Um, and does he make the soup? Tends to, yeah. If he has made it, I'd love to try it. OK, not All a problem. Right. Thanks, I'll darling. OK, find out. Instant first reaction is that there's quite a lot of things I would eat here. It seems like a, a kind of decent pub menu. A solid food offering should be the cornerstone of any pub. <laughs> if Colin can get this right, I'll immediately feel more positive about the prospects for this business. So Alex is all out mushroom soup, which you make here. Homemade mushroom soup. Hopefully you enjoy our first meal here. Food's important for the business here. But yes, I could do with more of it, but we cook good, wholesome food, freshly cooked, on the premises, and that's, 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 that's our ethos. And um, just going to serve it now. While rooms will always be the biggest moneymaker, I'm not sure the accommodation here is worth much in its current state. Thanks, darling. You're very welcome. Come and sit down. I'm wondering if food and drink could be the best way to generate some quick income. Can you tell me, you've been here 10 years, how busy is the bar? The bar definitely could be busier. Cos there's lots of money in bars. I've tried to get Colin to do some offers, promotions, to try and get people in, but he's not really wanting to do them at the moment. All right, darling, that's fine. Thank you very, very much. much. Was Thank everything you. OK for yeah, you? Lovely. Was it lovely? Yeah, lovely. Good. Thanks, darling. While the bedrooms left me feeling despondent, the food has started to restore my faith in reviving the falcon. My thoughts this morning were, yeah. what am, on earth am I going to do here? It is pretty desperate and dire. However, I feel remarkably cheered by a simple bowl of mushroom soup. The food's actually really good. So there's definitely something to base the recovery on. I had my doubt. But this has clarified my thinking. I'm feeling a lot more hopeful. If food is going to be the foundation of my plan, I first need to know more about the numbers that underpin this business. Knock, knock. 
Oh, hi. If I can make it into the dumping ground masquerading as an office, that is. Oh, my God, darling. How long has it taken you to make it look like this? 11 years. <laughs> Good Lord. What's I like, know what everything is. Do you want a seat? Well, it's like birds on top of it. Do you want to make a seat? It's like birds on top of it. No, this. I can't make it for you. Don't worry. Here, look, let I me, can move let it. Me, let me move it for you. My God. <laughs> it looks like you've been burgled. <laughs> Honest, Not quite. Honestly, darling. OK. So, some of the questions I have for you. In what percentage does each revenue stream bring in for you? Your fingertips. Nice. Is 45 rooms, 30, 30 liquor, 20 food, and 5% room hire. 45% accommodation, 30% mm. booze or yeah. bar, yeah. wet, yeah. and only 20% food. Yeah. Okay, in an ideal world, to do better than to break even, do you know how well you'd have to do in every department? Yes. Tell me. Yes, I'd like to do, you know, within bar and food. I'd, I'd like to do another two and a half thousand a week. The last two years, I've made a lot. Last year, I've been the worst. How long do you think you can keep doing, going on like this, if things don't turn around? Honestly. I've got to, I've got to turn around fairly quickly, I'd say. Yeah. Very, very quickly. <sighs> All right, my darling. I'll go and think. Thanks very much. Thank you. See you later. I'll see you later, thanks. It's an unforgiving set of figures. Oh, my goodness gracious me. And it's clear to me that there's a risk this business could fold if it continues to lose money for much longer. <laughs> Talking to Colin and ignoring everything else, lovely man. Talking to Jean, ignoring everything else, lovely lady. They're a great family. This place is a disaster. If I'm going to help them turn their financial fortunes around, I have to face up to the reality of what I have to work with. So, possibly my thoughts are that I will ignore the bedrooms because there's a lot to do here to bring them up to what I consider an acceptable standard and I don't think my pockets are deep enough. <sighs> you know, maybe just food and drink is an easier way to fast to make some money for him. But if the immediate future of the business is going to depend on the restaurant and bar... Would you need a hand? Yeah, you can do if you want. Lovely. I need to understand what Colin and Jean have attempted in this area in the past. So what have you tried that hasn't necessarily worked? I've tried pie nights, steak nights, that, the, the general pub nights. Tried two for one offer um, on a but night. But they worked? They worked for a certain at the time, then, then, it, then it died off a little bit. Yeah, but then you just stopped doing them? Yeah, because it, it died. Instead of in, like, bringing it in and out? Yeah. Mm. What would you like to see him try? Just different offers. Like, it's not that long ago that I've been saying, well, why don't we get the two for a certain amount of money again? Like, two for ten, for example. But nothing comes of it. I have looked at a two for... Look at the price. And? and? Um, I've just, I've just basically finished the menu now. You've been saying that for ages! It's on the computer now. I'll turn it off in It's on the computer now. Aye. He's literally been saying it for ages. For how long? Well, I've just done it. Just in time, in the nick of time. Print it off, then. I'll print it off. Let's see if he's really done it. <laughs> you can come again. <laughs> you can definitely come again. <laughs> I've pestered him for ages to get that. Promotional offers are a great way to generate interest in a business, so I'm hoping Colin isn't all mouth and no menu. You're waiting for the grand entrance, so you can you say, your boo socks. Look, you did this fast, didn't they? What's he got? Two main courses served Monday to Friday, 12 till 2. Can you do that and still make money? Yes. Do small, slightly smaller portions. Well, I think we should give this a go, don't you think? OK. Two meals for £13 is a great value offer and sure to tempt a few people in to try Colin's food. How long have you been working on this? <laughs> Ten years. <laughs> <laughs> OK. After a dispiriting morning at the Falcon, I'm finally starting to feel like there might be some life in this old bird yet. I don't have the option of holding my head in my hands and rocking backwards and forwards in despair. I just need to come up with a solution.
my first day at the Falcon had me wondering if it was already beyond my help. But after discovering Colin's homemade food offering, I've woken up with a clear idea of how to get this business flying again. What I have absolutely decided is that I do not want to tackle these bedrooms because I think within them lie a multitude of sins. Ideally, I will help him make some money so that he can decide what to do to the bedrooms, he can reinvest, he can update. And I think I'm going to hinge that very firmly on the very nice lunch I had yesterday. With food at the centre of my comeback plan, I also want to ensure Colin and Jean are getting the basics right across the business. So... And that starts with improving first impressions. The first thing I want to point out to you is curbside appeal. Your windows are littered with these pieces of paper. Yes. Yeah some of which really have no relevance at all. I mean, for goodness sake, your TripAdvisor thing is from 2011. Yeah. Colin. Yeah, I can see that now. With cleanliness more important than ever post-pandemic... Come over, please. Any visible signs of slime and grime are increasingly off-putting to potential customers. I would love you to get a little bit of weed killer and just spray off the weeds. Most people make up their minds about somewhere within the first 10 seconds. And this is not, doesn't look particularly prosperous. OK. And so I think you're being your own worst enemy. So we've got the Sunday Carvery advertised. We've got no other lunch food and nothing about dinner at all. OK. You just have to slightly look at this again with fresh eyes. Yeah. Shall we walk through the doors, please? Beyond the obvious and expensive to fix issues of the building's ageing structure and the decrepit carpets... Right. OK, so... I'm going to give them some simple and affordable ideas to instantly revamp the bedrooms, the golden goose of guest accommodation. Every bed should have at least a bedside table and a bedside light. Something like roller blinds that you get off the internet are so cheap, they're blackout. Yeah. It costs you 70 quid. Yeah. And there should be a chair for every person who's sitting in a room. Because there's no point me doing a swanky bedroom for you, one bedroom out of eight. Yeah. How is that going to help you? I would like to make sure that I generate cash for you so that you can decide what rooms need it, where and when and how. So, let's go downstairs and I'll give you my grand plan. With as many as 22,000 pubs across the country reportedly at risk of folding due to the challenges of the current economic climate, I want to do everything I can to ensure the Falcon isn't just another statistic. So, first of all, I'm absolutely sure that the food side of things is key to your revival because, you know, food and drink money comes in daily. Yeah. And this is the quickest way that I know to do it. You know, that we'll see a quick increase at the bottom line. OK. It seems fairly obvious to me that you're not doing much to boost your food sales. So, what I am suggesting is that we're going to make sure your dinner menu is displayed prominently, not only outside, but in every bedroom. Right. I also want Colin to try and attract as many locals as possible through the door with his two courses for £13 lunch offer. I definitely want us to leaflet in the town. We want the locals to feel like this is their place, mm. but we need to make sure that they understand what reason there is to come back in. Does that all sound sensible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's right. You are right in what you're saying. You know, you are right. People seem to bypass it these days. With food becoming the cornerstone of the Falcon's recovery, I want to give Colin's customers a spruced up space to dine in. I would like, from my side, to make this downstairs bit a much nicer environment. I'd like that to feel like somewhere you can eat and drink. So I'm going to make it a bit more multifunctional. Right. Finally, I want to make sure that every passerby is met with a positive first impression outside that tempts them to come inside. I want a right scrub up. Take down some of the unnecessary yeah. signs. You know, half of what people think of you is, like I said, the first 10 yeah. seconds, 15 seconds. We want them to give them a reason to stop and think, gosh, that looks really nice. Let's just pop our nose in. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with what you said. And you are, you are like, yes, outside, yeah, I need to... Titivate a bit. Titivate a little bit. it up, yeah. And get the menus more prominent. Yeah? Yeah. Great. I hope I'm leaving Colin with some food for thought. Yeah, I think over the next few days, we will look at things more deeply. Um, with maybe her eyes instead of our eyes. Change can't come soon enough. With the nest egg plundered, we've simply got to raise more revenue to reinvest in the business. We all know pub after pub after pub has closed. I really don't want the Falcon to be one of them. Falcon Hotel in Cambridgeshire is on its last legs. I've put a lot of my life into this building and I've fair to know how to keep it. To help owner Colin inject some life into his ailing business, I advised him to freshen up the tired looking exterior. I am keen to show Alex that, that I do care about my building and I, am, I have listened to her. Um, I've taken on board what she said and actually done something about it, so hopefully she'll see a massive difference and she'll be. If Colin wants the Falcon to thrive again... Last time I did this was a few years ago. It's important that he starts to take more pride in his pub's appearance and improve his curb appeal. There we go, that's the jet washing all done. That's all the green moss gone. Posters are all gone, which you asked me to do. I'll put, get the opening times up in a bit and with the menu. I've, I've even got a new mat at the front door. Alex, I've done it. <laughs> OK? The builder's looking OK. To help entice the locals in to boost his lunch trade, I asked Colin to start pounding the pavement. At least I've got a nice day for it. And do a door-to-door -door flyer drop, promoting a two-course for £13 special offer. That should help him build a budget to start renovating his rundown bedrooms. That's two streets done. 20, 25 done so far. Only about another 500 and 5,980 to do. Here we come. It's been more than two weeks since I last checked in at the Falcon, so I'm hoping to find some clear signs of improvement. Well, one thing, there's a few weeds gone. Good start. All the signage has gone out the windows, check. We painted blackboard and an actual menu. OK, so he gets a few brownie points. However, I'd quite like that to have been cleaned off. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure that he understands what I meant, because... I'll get a cloth, shall I? If Colin is serious about cleaning up his act, he'll have to do better than this. Hello, Donnie. So, look, this is what I want us to start on. Look at that. Oh, wow. Give yes. me one. Unfortunately for him, I won't always be around to do the dirty work. You're doing a good job there. <laughs> When's the last time you did this? We tell, we tell you to do them once a week. Really? There's a lot of traffic. Really? Yeah. To stand any chance of bringing back the locals, this place needs to look more prosperous. I think the thing is, in my eyes, cleanliness is definitely next to godliness. Because if it doesn't look immaculate outside, why would anyone risk coming and eating here? Right. Yeah? Do you want a job? <laughs> you start your start Monday. Do you want me to punch him? <laughs> <I'll> just... <laughs> Food is phase one of my master plan. If we can get the meals flying out of the kitchen... Right, you two, your chariot awaits. Right. Then Colin and Jean will have the cash to spend on the main money earner, the guest rooms. <sighs> so today we're heading out to a nearby used furniture warehouse that stocks all the basic bedroom amenities they're currently not offering at knockdown prices. Right. Aren't we hoppity hop? 
Well, I've decided to spend my money doing up the downstairs eating areas to help enhance the food offering. Right, dear Jean, dear Colin. Yes? I'm hoping to prove to Colin and Jean that it's possible to lift the level of the accommodation without breaking the bank. Places like this, you can find all your needs under one roof quite cheaply. And there are things you're going to have to purchase. A few extra chairs, a few bedside lights, a Head few box. extra side tables, a few little chests of drawers. I mean, come and have a look. So, for example, all these old-fashioned pub chairs that would look great in your establishment... That's similar to what we've got already. Yeah, similar. I know. We've got to find a way of giving it some pizzazz, that place. Mm. Because somehow, people aren't kind of excited about going there anymore. And that's what we've got to give them back again. It may look like a jumble sale, but a carefully chosen selection of bargain buys like this could instantly improve their bedrooms and help freshen up the Falcon's tired interiors. Right, I wanted to show you something else. Follow me down here. And I give you lamps! <laughs> Plenty I mean, of them. Well, I've said you need lamps on bedside yeah. tables. And honestly, darling, think how much nicer even the pub would be with a bit of different, with a few things. Instead of just having those dire, bloody bear bulbs once in a while. Yeah. Yes? Yes. <laughs> For less than £200, Colin and Jean could comfortably add the essentials to one of their rooms if they spend their money somewhere like this. And I know that you're slightly colour challenged. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> when you do decide to buy some lamps, get Jean to come with you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there is just acres of stuff here, darling. Mm -hmm. I don't need to walk you through the whole no, lot. No. But, Jean, you know, there is everything that your little heart could desire. Absolutely. So, in order to generate the cash to fund the revamp, I want Colin and Jean to continue to push the promotion of their food. I would really like you to try and focus on getting the lunch crowd in. Yeah? We need to generate money so that you can make the changes that you know you need to make. We've got a couple more weeks. We've got to do a big push. Yeah. OK? OK. Do all that. OK. I'm leaving Colin and Jean with plenty of work. As well as keeping up with cleaning the place from top to bottom, they need to pull out all the stops to attract more locals. I feel like there's a lot more to do, and so they need to get their skates on and do it. Um, ultimately, as ever, I can only advise and help. The hard work is going to be down to them. and there's no time to waste. To effect change, we need money coming into the coffers ASAP. And the Falcon's transformation has got off to a flying start. Two panels from the yes. right. Yes, two. Just two, two lovely. Oh, yeah. My makeover team is hard at work, applying the finishing touches to the freshened up downstairs. Two fifty. Adding a contemporary edge to the traditional pub style. And inspired by our visit to the furniture warehouse, Colin and Jean have begun to make some budget-friendly improvements to the upstairs. I think um, Alex would be very, very pleased, pleased with the results, because the room certainly is a lot fresher. Being able to just help spruce up the rooms and it not needing to cost a lot, this is the sort of thing that I want to be able to do. So hopefully we can continue and get all the rooms looking lovely. By making these simple additions, the bedrooms will be transformed from bare and bleak to fresh and functional. You know, it's going to have new blackout blinds, um, it's going to have a chair per person, the lamp either side of the beds. And so it's got everything that you'd expect in, in, a, in a hotel room. Smartening up the accommodation is an important positive step forward for the Falcon. But if they can't tempt the locals back to try the food... Hi, um, it's Jean from the Falcon. All their efforts to improve the upstairs will soon stall. All right, and do you want to go and have some lunch? About 12.30. And we're doing a lunch tomorrow with our special offer of the 2.13. And we were just wondering if you would be interested in popping over. No, that's fine. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. All right, then. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks. Bye. 
He's got a Zoom meeting. <laughs> Without an increased income from the food trade, the cash to keep revamping the bedrooms will quickly dry up and they could fall back into making a loss. We was wondering if you'd like to pop over and join us for lunch. No? OK. And then their goose could really be cooked. Today is my final visit to the Falcon in Cambridgeshire. And if my plan to revitalise the place is going to work... It's looking very spick and span. I'm counting on Colin and Jean to have tempted plenty of locals to come and try their new two courses for £13 pub grub menu. I'm a bit nervous for this afternoon because hopefully we've got lots of guests arriving for lunch with us. If the punters don't pitch up to help us fill the Falcon's tills and start building a budget to revive the bedrooms, I'll leave fearing for its future. We need to just see what happens with it and see what the customers say as well. Still nice and clean. I have to say, there's been no backsliding since I was last here. To help kickstart the recovery, my makeover team has spruced up the formerly shabby downstairs interiors. Hi, darling. Hello. How are you? I'm OK. How are you? Quite excited about seeing this here. What was once a dark, dated and confusing space with no sense of purpose has been transformed into a lighter, brighter eating area full of character and colour. I do like having this set up here. What do you think of it? It looks so lovely. Oh. It looks so much nicer. Good. It's got more of a friendly feel to it. Good. I'm so pleased, darling. And the changes continue next door in the snug. Ooh, this is very different, isn't it, darling? Yeah, it's lovely. The formerly drab decor has been given a vibrant new lease of life and the space opened up to accommodate additional diners. Oh, I like this colour and actually this gives you much more room. Yes, it's so much nicer in here. Great, well, so I'm very happy with all of this. Is there anything else I have to see? There is. I've had a little project of my own going on. What's that? Room two. Do you want me to show you? Yes, please. Okay. I'd love to see. Come on, then. When I first arrived, the depressing bedrooms were in a desperate state, lacking even the very basic amenities. Now Jean's refreshed room... Oh, my God, darling, that is lovely! ..is way more attractive, equipped with the essentials and revamped for the pocket-friendly price of £165. The only thing that we've bought is the blinds and the lamps. I mean, what a transformation. The room looks enormous. Yeah, it's, it looks so much better. Well done. I'm really pleased with you. It's a feather in her cap. A room like this will surely boost occupancy. Now, Jean has seen how much you can do with not very much money. Hopefully, it'll encourage them to do the same transformation to the other rooms. But in order to generate the money to make those changes, Jean and Colin first need to boost their food trade, which is why today's lunch is so vital. And with the punters already starting to pour in... Scampi chips and peas, please. ..the orders are coming thick and fast. Can I get a scampi and chips and ham, egg and chips? Yeah, no problem at all. All right. Cheers. Colin is a busy man. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. We've done 14 so far. But as the orders mount, so does the heat in the kitchen. I'm just going to pop in and check that Colin doesn't need a hand with delivery of food. I'll be right back. Give me a second. Customers are sitting waiting, and Colin is flying by the seat of his pants. Are you on top of everything? No, Seat's up ready. How long for the chips? Come on, then, quick. We've got loads of people out here. Jean and Colin are in danger of undoing all their good work. I'm going to have you in the thick of it, darling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, thank you. Good. 
If they don't take the opportunity to impress these guests, they risk losing the valuable local trade that is key to the Falcon's future. The thing is, Colin's got to be careful because he's really busy and he's not coping with it very well. We don't want people here and thinking that it's chaotic and they'll never come back again. And I've got Jean to come and take the orders here. And then look, here she is, she's taking some orders. <laughs> Can I just take your food order, please? No. Yes. Thank you, darling. With all hands on deck to help get service back on track. Oh, oh, this is a smile. oh darling, it's a pleasure. Yeah. It won't, isn't the first time, and it definitely won't be the last. <laughs> I'm hoping Colin is getting control in the kitchen. We are making chips, three burgers, and one coffee. I'll send them back in. We're busy out there. But with his pub grub earning rave reviews... It's lovely. It's delicious. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely delicious. I think the food here is good. Yeah, it's good. And the freshly renovated pub area also winning the seal of approval. I love the colour. It's very soothing. Thank you. It's nice it's and bright and cosy. Yeah. yeah. And it's a bit more relaxed. I'm feeling positive that this is the start of a new and more prosperous chapter in the Falcons' long history. What I'm trying to do is just remind local people, people in the area, that this is here, and hopefully doing this quite good value menu will encourage people to come in. Yeah, once people get the feel of the place, then they yeah. come back. When I first arrived, I was worried that the Falcon was already beyond my help. But thanks to Colin and Jean's dedication to the cause, I'm hopeful this old bird will soar once more. Just remember, our strategy is to get as many food customers in, oh, yeah. to start building up a little pot of cash again, to slowly but surely do the bedrooms. You've proved that you can make a big difference to the bedrooms quite cheaply. I've really enjoyed it. I've enjoyed coming here. I've enjoyed meeting you two. I hope that we've done enough to secure the future of the Falcon. So, darling, thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Thanks. darling. I think today showed that we can fill the place for lunch, which does give me hope for the future. I mean, there's a long way to go. Let's not pretend otherwise. But I definitely see a chink of light at the end of the tunnel. We've been here nearly 11 years now, so let, let, let's try and get to 20 years, eh? You know, which I'm sure we can do. Are you sure? You're, yeah. You're getting old. <laughs> Not old. <laughs> and the hotel inspector is back next Thursday at nine. It's a big week for salad veggies with top tips from Rocket to Gem Lettuce in brand new Carol Klein's Summer Gardening tomorrow at seven. Coming up, we get the inside story from Britain's most dangerous prisoner kept in a Hannibal Lecter-style cage. HMP Wakefield, evil behind bars, is next. <laughs>